Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be grading every coach for every NHL team. Part of a series we've been doing. We did the forwards, we did defensemen, we did goaltenders, we did the coach. Next one's the general manager. If you want to be part of that, you can go down to the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show there. Just search it. Actually, no, just subscribe. And uh, every day I'll send out a notification of when I will be going live, usually between 3 and 5 Eastern, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and 7.30 and 9.30 Eastern, Tuesday and Thursday. It's so much fun. In fact, it's where we got the grades here for these, for the coaches and for all of them. It's an interactive grading where people come on and they basically say what their grade is going to be. I write it all down. We do an average of all the grades and then we do a video about it. I will also give my grades for each individual coach and the reason why in the video as well. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. www.steelflyers.com uh, if you like the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, all of it is covered there, and we're looking for creators. So if you're interested in doing uh, writing or what I'm doing right now with uh, YouTube or uh, blogging or whatever it is, then want to make a little money doing it, comment in the comment section, and we might be the next person that's part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. I'll tell you what, there will be frolic. There will be frolic. Let's go frolic now, shall we? Look at the Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim Ducks. Um, of course, we that's uh, Dallas Eakins uh, was a player and was a coach for the Edmonton Oilers, who I, I live in Edmonton. I think he's a great coach, and I can only say that just by watching him and his systems that he puts in place. I know Anaheim is going to be all over me on this one. But I gave him a B, and the community gave him a C, mostly because the team has not done well. Has it underperformed, though? I'm not so sure about that. The, on paper, this team is very blasé. They're, they have a lot of young players that are not offensive players. Uh, they weren't when they were drafted. Max Jones, Sam Steele, although he did put up some decent numbers, was never really thought of as being a high-end offensive player when he came in, but has improved every year under the tenure of Eakins. And to me, that's really what a coach is supposed to do in these situations where you have a young team like this. Isaac Lunderstrom is, turn, is turning into a very good two-way winger. Um, like I said, I gave him a B. The community gave him a C. What do you think? I've heard from Anaheim fans that they overplay their veterans and all of that. Coaches like to have their veterans be beat by younger players. They have to beat them out of their position. And he is one of those people. You have to beat that younger player out. I know. Tell, I bet you there's going to be guys that say they're already better, but it's a judgment call. I don't think they are. I don't think Jacob Larson's better than Mark, than Cam Fowler right now. So it's up to you. What do you think? Uh, Boston Bruins, Bruce, Ca uh, Bruce Cassidy. I mean, what can you say about this guy? This team plays with the right energy, plays with passion. Uh, he got a lot out of a very young defense to make the playoffs last year. I, thought he's, I, I think he's done fantastic all the way through. So uh, you can... You can give a lot of props also to Marshawn and Bergeron. It's nice to have those guys as a coach there. But I think overall, they've come over every just about every challenge and, and did about as best as this team could do under Bruce Cassidy. I gave him an A, and the community agreed with me and gave him an A as well. Next, Buffalo Sabres. And this was uh, a little bit difficult because, of course, Granado only had uh, half the season to work with. Um, so, and he he is the, the coach right now. I just, just forgot the previous coach's name off the top of my head. Kruger, Ralph Kruger, geez. 
uh, would have probably got a lot lower score here. <laughs> Didn't seem to do well there in Buffalo. But Granado came in and changed the energy completely. Uh, and the most important thing about him was that guys like Casey Middlestat, Tage Thompson, uh, Dylan Cousin, Anders Bjork all had great second halves under his tenure. And that's what, and Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, the team as a whole played with a lot more drive, a lot more confidence. I loved what he did. I thought he did fantastic. I don't know why they dragged their heels in uh, saying that, you know, giving him the, taking away the uh, temporary role in the offseason should have been the media as far as I was concerned. But as far as I thought, like I believed it should have been an immediate thing they did, but they, they waited it out. Uh, the community gave him a B minus. I gave him a B plus. I don't know what more he could have did under the situation. Very difficult situation to be put in. And I thought he did fantastic considering. What do you guys think, Buffalo Sabres fans? Uh, Calgary Flames, Sutter. Sutter comes in after uh, you know, halfway through the season and really was coming in to assess the team to uh, decide where they're going to go from here. Who is going to stay? Who is going to go? All of those sort of things. Um, what they needed to do to change the roster. So this is kind of an incomplete grade. Um, the, the community gave him a C plus. I gave him a C because they didn't, they were a 500 team. Um, I did think, I think maybe that might be a bit low. Because they did play with a little more drive under him, it was it was a very weird situation though. So I want to see what he does in another year. Didn't really want to give him uh, that huge of a grade right now, um, because yeah, it's it's just not much of a, a window of opportunity to to be able to give a good grade there. I think next uh, Carolina. Brindamore, the community, I was, first I'll say that ever since he's been in there, there hasn't, I don't think there's been a player that has done worse, except for maybe Jake Gardner. But, I mean, he didn't really do worse. He never did well. So, um, besides that, Brady Shea came over from the Rangers after having a really rough stretch there, turned it around, and has played very well. Uh Jordan Martinuk has just progressed leaps and bounds under his, under his tenure. Marty Marty Nietzsche looks fantastic. Uh, Nino Niederreiter goes to the Islanders in Minnesota and basically gets handed off and comes to Carolina and now is starting to show consistency, which was the problem with him right from the get go. You got to give a lot of this to the coach. Um, he's all every player has played fantastic and he did so with some suspect goaltending. Mrazek and Reimer are not what I would call number one, number two uh, A and B goaltenders. We'll see what Frederick Anderson and R Antti Ranta do there, but his system is fantastic and this team is growing into it and only getting better all the time. Not to mention he won coach of the year. So I gave him an A plus. The community gave him an A. Next, Chicago Blackhawks, Kulaton. I, uh, I I love this guy. I think he's done fantastic with this roster. In the beginning of the year, I didn't hear one team picking them to make the playoffs, not one. Uh, Kevin Lankinen, of course, was given an opportunity and did very well there. How much was that the system of the Chicago Blackhawks? It's hard to say because... They actually played a very offensive system. They didn't play a defensive system at all. I have a feeling, though, that they played to the, to the weaknesses of Kevin Lankinen. And as the season went on, he started getting tired out, which they got Marc-Andre Fleury. But every player, again, he's one of those guys that seems like every player does better in his tenure. Brandon Hagel came in and did absolutely fantastic with him. Um, Kubelik has been excellent under his tenure. Dylan Strom's played, although not 
great considering how high he was drafted. Still better than he has in, in did in Arizona, and he does seem to be getting better all the time. Uh, so I have to give them uh, give him. I gave him really high marks. I really like him. I think he's a fantastic coach. I gave him an A. Uh, but the community gave him a B and I never really had an opportunity to find out why they went so low on that, but I thought that was a little low. What do you guys think? Chicago Blackhawks fans. Uh, next Colorado avalanche and, uh, Bednar. Um, he's got a system in there that works really well. Of course, he's got a lot of great his pieces to play that system as well, but it's a fantastic defensive system hybrid system that seems to be able to it's progressing into one of those systems that uh kind of like the tampa bay lightning really it, it it's going to probably a, be a cup winning system now there's a lot of uh difficulty in grading a coach like this when you have a roster as fantastic as this but i gave him a b plus and so did the community give him a b plus and my b plus might be me uh, being a uh, falling victim or falling to the downside of the fact that he does have such a great roster, if I really thought about it. I, I think he could deserve an A here. What do you guys think, Colorado? What should uh, Bednar get for a grade? Uh, next, the Dallas Stars. And uh, bonus took over after uh, – I should have looked it up coach from before Middleton no anyways you guys can help me there Dallas fans what was the coach before that bugs me but anyways he took over and Dallas went to the finals they did really well last year was a very trying year with COVID for them they had Radulov was injured a lot Hintz was injured off and on uh Sagan was injured how really do you judge how well he coached he almost they almost made the made the playoffs and they even have problems with their goaltending with Hudobin the issues that happened there so i gave him a b yeah, and and uh the community gave him a b and, and the more i think about it the more i would could have went a little low here uh how much more could you expect a coach to do with this lineup having all the problems that they had what do you guys think, Dallas fans? Are we low or are we high? Do you have it right about there? What do you give, Mr. Bonus? Uh, the Blue Jackets, we gave a mark to Tortorella, and we all gave him an F. And I hated doing that. Anybody who knows me, that if you guys are subscribers to my YouTube, I talk about it a lot on my live streams. I really love Tortorella, but... Last year was terrible. It'll be a black mark on his career. It wasn't good. He, it seems like he completely lost the room last year. And, uh, yeah, what more can you say? People are, like, kind of lying Abe and kind of talk poorly about him. Uh, tough, tough go. But I don't know what we can give for Larson because he's new. Uh, he's, we'll have to find out what it is, but we had to give him an F. What do you think, Columbus Blue Jacket fans, with Tortorella and his tenure? I'd like to give him more because he did fantastic things in Columbus, but uh, we got to give him an F. Um, Detroit Red Wings and Blasio. And this is a difficult one. Uh, he... It's got a, such a young roster, green roster. The, the only question is, are the are players getting better under, uh, and is the system being put in place growing, and uh, are you seeing an improvement every year with Detroit? And the answer for me is yes. Um, Blaschel and Stevie Eisman seems to have a lot of faith in him, and that gives me a lot of faith. Uh, you know, adds to the grading for me because Stevie Eisman is probably one of the greatest minds that ever played the game and is part of the game. Or, you know, we see what he built in Tampa Bay and now he's doing it in Detroit. Um, I gave him a B. The uh, community get, gave him a B minus, which I think happens when a team just doesn't succeed no matter what. No matter what the reasons for it or what have you, 
people will give low marks simply because of that. I don't know. I see it. I see players getting better every year. So I, I give him a B, and I like the system that he's putting in place there. It's just very difficult to to get that system to look the way. Though I think it's going to be a great system when when there's mature enough players there to be playing it on a consistent basis. And I think Blaschel's heading in the right direction though. So Edmonton Oilers, uh, Dave Tippett. I was big, actually a fairly big supporter of Tippett when he was in Arizona, but I have to say I am not really impressed with what he's done in Edmonton. Um, weird lineup choices, uh, playing players over m- minutes that they I don't believe they should be playing. Uh, he's playing left. The only thing I can say is he's playing a very offensive system, which is going to work with this group because you have no choice now with this group to play a very offensive system. But this team has played poor defensively through his whole tenure. And, uh, that can be a player problem. Yes. But the systems I see him, them play is very weird. It doesn't, it seems like it's all over the place. Uh, I give Tippett a D, and uh, the community was a little nicer and gave them a C. What do you think, Oilers fans, of Dave Tippett and his approach to coaching the Edmonton Oilers? Next, Florida Panthers and Coach Quinville. And I found this interesting because I remember when we were doing Coach of the Year uh, live streams, and almost everybody was saying, Brenda Moore, Brenda Moore, Brenda Moore, Brenda Moore. I thought Quinville should have won this year because I think that he did more with this roster. Uh, this roster was, let's face it, before the season started, nobody was picking Florida to make the playoffs. And this team not only made the playoffs, they crushed it. To me, I, got, I gave Quinville an a, a plus. But the funny thing is, the community did too which is a higher grade than Carolina, an A. They gave them an A, but an A-plus here. So um, every play, Carter Verhege had a career year. Uh, Sam Bennett comes over and crushes it from Calgary. Anthony Duclair probably had one of his best years of his career. Um, Frank Vetrano, the list goes on. Mackenzie Weger just gets better and better under Q. Gustav Forsling could barely make the play, make make the bigs, and comes over and is playing top four minutes and looking great. What more can you say about Q? A plus. I think he should have won. Did I say the Vesna? I hope I didn't say the Vesna. I should have. He should have won Coach of the Year last year. I think the Adams. Next, uh, the LA Kings, and I'm going to be. I'm really interested to hear what. L.A. Kings fans think of McClellan so far in L.A. <coughs> um, I think he's got a good system working there. I, I He's working with a very nondescript defense. Michael Anderson has improved greatly under his tenure. Matt Roy comes over and looks really good, so much so that they give him a long-term contract. Sean Walker who, you know, has been just on the outskirts of playing in the NHL, looked like a solid top six here. Um, Got to give coach credit for those sort of things, man. This is not a roster that in the beginning of the year looked like, hey, look at this on paper. This is a playoff team for sure. Now, they didn't make the playoffs, and they had difficult times in the areas of COVID and stuff like that as well. But I thought that the roster itself did played over their heads quite a bit. Um, young players seem to be progressing under him. I gave him a B and the community gave him a C, which I found kind of, uh, again, it's results orientated. A lot of people will give low scores to coaches. You know, it's the coach's fault. How many times, you know, it's when the, you know, the old saying, when the team's doing poorly, it's the coach. When the team's doing well, it's the players. <laughs> So, uh, next Minnesota wild Dean Evison. Um, I, I think he's an absolutely fantastic coach. I think Dean Evison in a couple of years is going to be in the same spoken in the same breath of Barry Trotz, Tortorella, Paul Maurice, uh, Cooper, these, uh, Quinville, the great coaches of this generation. He has 
the system. The offensive system that he has in place in the offensive zone, the way these guys tic-tac-toe pass. Now, I know Kaprizov is there. He's going to be able to do that anyways. But a lot of these guys weren't like that before he got there. And um, I thought, he's been, I thought he, he has been fantastic. This team has just gone up levels after levels in the playoffs with Vegas. Uh all of a sudden, I don't know, tell me if you guys saw this in all year when you were watching them in Minnesota, but he, they just jumped into a 1-1-3. One, one, I think they were two, when they were two games down defense and played it perfectly, like really, really well, like they've been playing it forever, just like that. That, to me, is a sign of a very good coach. Jordan Greenway has just gone leaps and bounds ever since Everson has taken over. Joe Erickson Eck as well. Now that's part of their progression anyways, but the fact of the matter is he seems to help players become better. Kevin Fiala, the confidence these guys are playing in under his tenure is absolutely fantastic. I love him. I think he's great. Like I said, I gave him an A. The community gave him a B. I think that's low. What do you guys think about uh, Dean Everson? Wild fans. Next, Montreal Canadiens in Ducharme. Um, I don't know what you can say. When Ducharme took over from Julian, one of the greatest coaches, will may even may even get into the Hall of Fame. Um, there was problems there, and Shea Weber even came out in public and said that they had problems in the room going on there. When Shea Weber comes out and says something like that, he's not a guy that like airs out dirty laundry of teams or anything like that. It's probably something pretty important and big. And from the moment he got there, this team just started to build up steam and kind of forget about whatever the problems were in the room and just got better and better. What more can you say? Brought them to the finals. Now, I know Carey Price is a big part of that, but he did a lot of great things to do that. Right when the, when uh, Montreal, the in the first series, and that was against Toronto, right? He played the veterans like Stahl and, and uh, um, Perry above, guys like Kokaniemi and Caulfield, and that got a lot of heat. And I was saying at the time, I was like, you know what? This team is going to win by cohesion and playing as a team. And he wants these veterans to show these young guys what it means to be a warrior. Now, those guys are not as skilled as those kids, but those guys know what it takes to play in the playoffs, a warrior's mentality. And Montreal Canadian and the Montreal Canadiens played with that. Those kids came in, they followed it, and grew into that type of mentality. I thought it was a great move. I thought he did a – I can't give him any less than – an A plus. The community gave him an A, and I, I really don't know why. Because they didn't win the cup. This team had no business being there in the finals because because uh, um, Price was so good, I suppose. But I don't think it was just because of that. I thought he was. I thought he did really well. We'll see what he does in the regular season this year. It was a small sample size, but for that sample size, I'll give him. I gave him that score. Uh, the Nashville Predators. Hines, this team was almost out of it halfway through the year. Uh, Matt Duchesne got injured. Uh, Johansson was injured. And he rallied these troops and changed the energy of this team. I think part of that, I've heard a lot about Matt Duchesne being a very uh, whiny guy and can like kind of suck the energy out of the room. But even when Matt Duchesne come back, first of all, he put Matt Duchesne on the wing and uh, they still played very, very well and ended up making the playoffs. So I got to give him high marks for that. Um, I gave him a B. Uh, the community gave him a B minus. And I even think my B might be a little low there. Um, I have to really think, is it, why did I only give him a B? Tell me why. You guys tell me why in Nashville or anybody out there that's listening to this fine programming. Okay. New Jersey Devils um, and Lindy Ruff. Difficult to assess this. He had a very poor defense. As you can see, Dougie Hamilton is here. 
and Ryan Graves did not have those guys last year. Um, and yeah, it's just super, super young, not very effective. You had Murray, uh, definitely a downgrade from Adam Graves or Ryan Graves, Adam Graves, um, and would have loved to have a guy like Dougie Hamilton. Also, Mackenzie Blackwood was injured a lot, so they were playing with guys like Wedgwood and Dell. But what he did have for pieces did really well. Yanni Kalkinen in their forward group had a had a you know careerish year, like getting to the point where he's in obvious uh, top six. Sharon Govich, fantastic year. Pavel Zaka has seems to have really hit a stride under uh, Ruff's tenure. Um, Maybe uh, Jesper Bratt played well. Nico Heischer was injured, and I thought Jack Hughes played extremely well, considering the kid's only 20 years old. Got to remember that. Um, a lot of players getting better every better under his tenure. You got to give him props for that. Very difficult year, but in this situation with this young team, the measure is really, is everybody getting better? Are the players improving under his tenure? And I have to say yes. Um, the, so I gave him a B and the, uh, community gave him a C plus. And again, I think a lot of that is results orientated. There was people that gave him a B plus New York Islanders, of course, Barry Trotz. What do you say about Barry Trotz? Um, I still say that on paper, this team barely makes the playoffs with lesser coaches, which is most coaches are lesser than Barry Trotz. Larry, Barry Trotz is rare air, unbelievable coach. Yes, he has a great system. Yes, but he, he, the most important thing is he is able to get his players to play within that system and do so happily. They're happy to play for him. He's a great team builder, amazing team builder. And that what happens is the teams that play for him this are the uh, the team is greater than the sum of its parts. He brought Nashville teams to the playoffs that had no business being there. Uh, of course, we saw what he did with Washington, making them play, helping them play defensively uh, very well when they won the cup, and then coming here in the island and bringing them to the semifinals twice in a row when really I think they had no business to be there. A plus. And I believe it was A plus for both. Yes, Islanders were A plus. New York Rangers, and uh, we gave a we gave a grade to Quinn. Um, I gave him a C plus, and they gave him a C plus, which is like pretty good for a young team. I know a lot of people out there did not like what Quinn was doing there in New York. Um, I don't a lot of players getting better every year under his tenure. Uh, I might even be a little low here, but um, it was such a small sample size, really. I know he was there for a while, but these players were just growing. I don't think we got the full extent of how good he was. Ryan Lindgren and Adam Fox, for instance, you don't think that's attributed to coaching at all, how, how great they improved under him? I think I could be a little low there. As far as Gallant is concerned, we did give a grade for him in his first past and uh, his past performances, which we know he brought Vegas to the finals when nobody thought that they, he was going to be there. And I gave him an A and the community gave him a B plus. Next. Ottawa Senators and DJ Smith. Um, the second half of the season, this team was on fire, playing absolutely fantastic. Um, so I gave him, I gave DJ Smith an A. Uh, the community gave him a B plus, but I don't know how you can give him seriously less than an A with every young player has improved under him pretty much that I see. The only one being not so much is Logan Brown and uh, maybe Colin White hasn't really been got to where they thought he was going to go, but I'm not sure he was ever going to get to that 
Um, he was never that type of player. So maybe it's a little unfair to ask Colin White and put the blame on, certainly on uh, Smith for him not reaching that point. But uh, besides that, Artem Zub was fantastic last year. Uh, Eric Branson, they're taking, he's only 21 years old, a little hard to judge, but he seems to be improving. Um, the big question mark will be what he can, how he can do with the goaltending there and uh, in Ottawa. And that was something else about a lot of the coaches here, how they get great things out of their goaltenders. Like a guy like Barry Trotz, goaltenders seem to be better under Barry Trotz. So uh, we'll see how they, we'll see how we do from there. But that was our, I thought he did fantastic last year. Philadelphia Flyers and AV, um, Alan Vigno, we gave him a C and a C minus under a very trying year. Um, I just think we haven't seen enough of what AV, the year before the team did fairly well under him. How much is it AV's fault that Carter Hart doesn't, has like kind of maturity issues and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they have Oscar Limblom and, Patrick, who didn't play at all and now playing the uh, uh, COVID-ridden year with young players. There was a lot of question marks here. I just gave them a C and uh, left it at that. We'll see what they do next year. Uh, It's kind of a write-off year. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So it was a C and a C- minus from the community there for the Philadelphia Flyers. The Pittsburgh Penguins, um, Sullivan, I think, is a great coach. I don't think he gets enough credit for how good of a coach he is. I think a lot of credit goes for, to Sidney Crosby, and so it should. But the fact of the matter is, this team probably shouldn't have made the playoffs last year. Uh, they've consistently had injury problems, injury problems, injury problems. Not great goaltending. And as I mentioned before, a really good sign – that you have good coach is that good goaltending seems to follow them around. Meaning, or you have poor goaltending and you're still able to win. Sullivan does that. Because of that, I give him an A+. I think he's a fantastic coach who's worked with a very thin roster and got them to the playoffs. I also think Crosby's a big part of that, which is difficult to say how much compared to the coach. But the fact is they make it and they do it in situations when they look like they shouldn't a lot. Um, uh, it's A minus by the community. A plus for me. Next, Seattle Kraken. And that's Hexall. We, we just gave him a C. Uh, well, basically on his history in Philadelphia. Struggled hard there. Um, that's another reason why it's hard to give Alan Vangio a score because Hackstall came in as a super kid coach. or He wasn't a kid, but young superstar coach coming from college. Things didn't work out in Philadelphia. But he's so highly regarded that a brilliant guy like, like Ron Francis hooks, uh, hooks him up into Seattle to give him another go. Interesting. We'll see. I we both gave him a C for now because we really it's hard to judge. So, uh, Seattle fans, what do you think of the hiring of Hackstall? Next, St. Louis Blues and um, Craig Berube. This was all over the board. There were some that gave him an A. There were some that gave him a D for Craig Berube here. Um, they did win a cup. That, that has to account for something. And I think he does a lot with really what I think is not a great defense here. I know Tory Krug is a good defenseman. Justin Falk is a good defenseman. Marco Scandella is okay. They're very average. And they're very much the same. They have too much of the same type of player here in St. Louis. And not the same type you want. They're smallish. Uh, try to move the puck quickly. Not spectacular in the defensive zone. They can be overmatched. And uh, I just, it's a very nondescript defense to me. And the fact that they make the playoffs with that, I got to give them a little extra. So um, 
I gave him a, I gave Furby a B, and the community gave him a D minus. Next, the San Jose Sharks and Barube. And what do you do with this? Well, Bugner, sorry, not Barube, Bugner. Um, this is almost impossible. I don't even know what Barry Trotz could get out of this situation that was in there with Kane being a problem and uh, all of the issue. Like, team players are actually saying they're not going to play next year if Kane comes back. What does that tell you about what the room, the struggle this coach has with this room? Very difficult to assess. Poor goaltending. Uh, but all that being said, I, I, gave, I gave him a D just simply because he does have a job to do and that job didn't get done. But I don't know. It might be too much to ask for any coach to have done what needed to be done there in San Jose. Uh, and D minus by the community. Tell me what you guys think in San Jose. Was there anything in Bugner that said, you know, or do you just say, you know what, it's not his fault. I mean, how do you judge it? I agree. How do you judge it? It's a terrible situation going on there. Defensemen that are overpaid, uh, poor lineup in general, uh, weak goaltending. I don't know. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, Cooper. This is interesting. There was some low ones here. I, I think Cooper just gets a bad rap because he has such a good team. Uh, the team is fantastic. But you uh, you got to look at it this way too, though. They have a good team because a lot of these young players that have come up from their minor leagues, like Matthew Joseph, Colton, Ross Colton, uh, Verhege that went to Florida, um, Eric Chernak, have progressed extremely well under his tenure. Yes, they have a lot of talent, but they have a lot of talent because of how a lot a lot to do with how well he has helped these young players progress. So. Um, also, I think he's got a fantastic system there. Uh, it's even with a great team, it's not easy to keep a team engaged and be able to do a lot of the things that they do. It's always going to be almost like a, I don't think he'll, if, if, as long as Tampa Bay always has a great team like this, he probably won't get the credit is due. Uh, we'll see if Tampa Bay ever goes downhill and how much he gets out of the team, but I think he's fantastic. I gave him an A+. Plus. The community gave him an A. Next, uh, the Leafs with Keefe. Um, I gave him a little, I gave him a B- minus and the community gave him a C+. Plus. But I'm not really sure why. It's such a concoction of a lineup. That's the word. High-end talent in their top six. Um, I still don't think Wayne Simmons should be playing as many minutes as he does. Um, the deep, they, they were seventh defensively last year. How does that not, when you look at the lineup and go, you know, Riley, Brody, Muzzin, Justin Hall, and like guys like Travis Dermott, uh, Anderson was hurt a lot. Can't you put that down to a, to a system that plays both ways? I see a system that plays well offensively and does come back and play defensively. The forwards, that is. Um, B minus, to me, maybe even not fair. It's a very difficult team to assess the coaching on. Uh, what do you guys think? Help us out there in Toronto. What do you think of Keith and how he puts his forwards together, plays his defense pairings, and all of those sort of things like that? Let me know in the comment section. Vancouver Canucks and Green. Um, this team probably should have been better last year, but it was very small. They had a brutal first uh, schedule. Like, oh, my God, they were playing crazy amounts in the first 20-some uh, games and then had COVID and all of that. It is really hard to assess. Before that, I thought the team was playing very well. And you know what? I'm going to... Right here, right now, I'm going to give them a higher grading than I've given them because Pedersen has improved, had a down year last year. Bo Horvat has been fantastic. Uh, Nils Hoglander came in and played well. 
their young players have come in and played fairly well under his tenure. And that's really what his job has been right now as this team is growing into a contender. So I'm going to give him a C plus, And it might even be low. What do you think in Vancouver? What do you think of Green? Um, that should be a very interesting one. Um, the, the community gave him a D. And I guess, you know, we're hard on coaches. No excuses, my friends. You've got all of these players. You've you got to make it work somehow. And I, I guess there's something to be said for that. But maybe I'm a little light on the coaches. <laughs> uh, Vegas, DeBurr and uh, DeBoer. Um, pretty good roster to make the playoffs. And they did make the playoffs. They had great goaltending. Um, I think he got kind of outcoached against Minnesota, but ended up winning it anyways. Um, I gave them I gave them a B, and the community gave them a B. Um, players seem to like playing for them. They they've been uh, weak up the middle for a long time. Chandler Stevenson uh, came over and was basically a fourth liner, and you got to give props to DeBoer to helping him change into a top center role anyways and doing so very well. The team seems to play well for him, so I give him a B. What do you guys think? In, uh, I know that there's a lot of guys. I've heard both. There's a lot of guys that don't think he's great at all, that it's the team that does well, has very little to do with DeBoer. And then I hear a lot of people that think his systems are, you know, in place and the players really like playing for him and all of that. So tell me what you think in Vegas. Um, Washington Capitals and Lavi, I gave him a C plus. Uh, this roster did about what everybody thought they were gonna, he, they were going to do. Um, he did get by very well with some injured goaltending there. Uh, not the strongest defense in the world. And they, but a lot of good offensive players, all stars and stuff like that. First round and outs disappointing, but I thought they played well. That's it. Should Washington only play well? Probably not. Um, so I gave him a C plus, and the community gave him a C plus as well. Jets, Paul Maurice, I gave him an A because they had no defense. And Hollebuck actually has struggled last year. It wasn't his best year by his own standards, by his own admission. And yes, they have a solid top six, but um, that defense was really poor on paper. You know, you didn't have Nate Schmidt. You, Neil Pionk was playing very high up there. Stanley was playing a lot of minutes that he probably shouldn't have been playing. Dylan DeMello was playing very high on the roster and it was just a patchwork defense that they made it work. And that's coaching too. Those Winnipeg guys come back and help their defense hard. And that's coaching to get those good to do that because it's not what players generally want to do is do that. They want to score and stuff like that. It takes a very persuasive coach. He's been around for a long time. He always seems to succeed. I give him an A. The community gave him a B plus. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give to you today. Hmm, what's going on here? Jeez, I want to show you. Let's stop this. Oh, no. Wow. I can't stop it. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
So what am I going to do about this one? What the? What is going on here? 